Hello again, everyone. Edwin Learner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about the December 26, 2019 new moon, solar eclipse, and Capricorn. Now, you're talking about a solar eclipse in astrology in general. I mean, it's like a, a new moon, but it's more amplified and intensified. It could have very uh, much more sustained, a protracted impact and effect, and it might, it may be even life-altering in some cases. Now, I mean, when you're talking about a regular new moon, astrology, of course, could be uh, about really being uh, rejuvenated and and, and revive having a lot of uh, exorbitant amount of energy to uh, to start something new. But remember, when you're talking about a solar eclipse, it can be much more intensified, powerful, and amplified. The impact can be much more uh, prodigious. This could be a time where you could strongly discard uh, things that were frivolous or superfluous that were holding you back. Uh, at this time, whatever had uh, prohibited you previously can be cast aside, and it could be the, a very strong time, a good period to start uh, something new. Now, when you're talking about uh, new moon solar eclipse, I mean, it could impact all collectively, but I would say especially, uh, I mean, of course, Capricorn, of course, because it is in there. Uh, not just saying it, it, I believe it, I mean, it will strongly impact Capricorn uh, because it's got somebody that has a Capricorn or a Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant. Uh, Capricorn, of course, because it's going to be uh, in their sign. And, um, of course, Cancer, because Cancer is simply uh, impacted uh, and affected by all transits and phases of the moon because the moon does govern and rule the zodiac sign cancer and a lot of this could be attributed to i believe to why the zodiac sign cancer can be so temperamental moody and fickle and this will especially be pronounced if this is making a conjunction to one's capricorn or cancer sun moon or ascendant at this time now um this could be uh, a, a new start and and maybe perhaps for something that's going to last for a protracted period or a new start after maybe doing maybe something that you have been doing different for a long for a protracted period given that we're talking about not just a regular new moon but an app but a solar eclipse again that could be much more intensified and more powerful and more magnified than a regular new moon. It could be the start of a position of authority or some kind of strong responsibility or, or something that requires a lot of uh, discipline. If you're, let's say this is falling in your fifth house in your natal chart, it might be a time where you might be, be focusing on starting something with karate or self-defense and you know martial arts can of course require a lot of uh, discipline it could be a life-altering uh, something very life-altering because it may be something you may be doing very consistently and for a very prolonged uh, period um, it could be uh, something too uh, we're, we're looking at this as well. This is a, it could be also a new start in something that requires a lot of structure and something very, um, maybe it's the beginning of a structured settlement of say if it falls in your seventh house, something somewhat flippant with that, of course, but I wouldn't rule that out of the realm of possibility. It could be something that, that begins, that requires a lot of seriousness and a lot of consistency and something you may have premeditated and planned for a prolonged period, considering that we are talking about Capricorn energy. Capricorn energy, of course, could be very prolonged. I mean, I'm sorry, very premeditative in planning energy um, it could be something that's that you start that's going to require a lot of industry and a lot of laborious effort but a, but something too that requires that we're very ambitious uh, energy uh, as well and it could, could be something like when I mean it could even be something like I mean for example I mean Capricorn can be associated with the reputation now could be just simply going about the beginning process of improving a reputation score and you figure well how can that be significant well when you improve your reputation score uh, on, on something I mean maybe perhaps it can open up a lot of um, you know a lot of uh, other things for you to be able to do to get approved of and, and I mean this is something where I mean uh, I mean, reputation scores can be very uh, significant in terms of 
I mean, you know, on whatever it might be pertaining to, maybe it improves your chances of getting some other things uh, accomplished, but you'd have to look into that more as far as the specifics go uh, on that. So anyway, now, it also could just be a general career move. That's a new start at this time. If you had been stagnant in some career for a while and you and become tired of you know, the, maybe the low income or whatever it might have been, or if you were in a subservient position for some time or some subordinate role, maybe this, again, going back to new start connected with some kind of authority position. Um, and it can be given that you're talking about a solar eclipse in contrast to a regular new moon. It could have been something where you were in a certain position for a certain, for a very prolonged and protracted period. And then this is something that where you might make this major change all of, all of a sudden and decide to do something different. That could be something that you have for a very sustained period uh, in your life. So anyway, well, another thing I want to talk about, too, um, it could be uh, looking at this as well. It could be the start of a, um, of a Capricorn profession, and especially if this is hitting the second, sixth, or tenth house in the chart, because those I see as the money houses, the income houses, the, those are career houses. The tenth house is what we correlate with the career more, but the second and sixth house can be connected with our professions in what sometimes could be uh, at some point in one's career, because those are the money houses. Those are the ways that we generate uh, second sixth and tenth houses are all about work in industry uh, the sixth house can be connected with our work and, and but it also but which isn't always about necessarily what we get paid to do but some but in many cases it can be in our employment in our career as well or ultimately wind up being one's career uh, because it is connected with work and employment though the tenth house is more associated with one's career now the thing about this too is it could be the start of something Capricorn related, such as something with accounting or something with business or politics or uh, architecture, dentistry, or computer programming, something with information technology. It could be something associated with carpentry or even timekeeping uh, at this time. Anything that could be uh, Capricorn uh, related uh, at this time. And the thing about this too is that of course it's important to look at the house it falls in in one's natal chart as this of course could impact uh, the delineation and interpretation now mine is going to fall uh, in my eighth house in my natal chart and this could be a very significant point i mean it could be a time for me where it could be the fortuitous for some business in connection with astrology the occult supernatural and something that was planned and premeditated for some time something that's going to be uh, that's going to require very methodical energy and very consistent effort it could also be a time where i might uh, it could be the beginning period of maybe getting more consistent more uh, emotional moral monetary support it could be given that we're talking about a solar eclipse that could have been something that i feel i may have lacked for some time but maybe i start to get it and it could be a very turning point uh, for me as far how is how it impacts my life because you're talking about solar eclipses again could be very uh life altering now Another thing, too, is that you've got to look at the aspects it makes to points in one's natal chart, as this, of course, could impact uh, the delineation and interpretation. Now, mine, uh, when this occurs, it's going to make an opposition. Uh, it's going to fall again. It's going to fall in my, um, it's going to fall in my eighth house, but it's going to make an opposition to my uh, Mercury, my second house Mercury uh, in cancer now one way this may manifest and pan out this could be some new response given that talking about the fact that you're going to have the solar eclipse going to take place and capricorn will take place in my eighth house that could reflect a new responsibility perhaps to something um, astrological uh, astrology related at this time uh, it could be making that opposition to mercury and cancer in the second house mercury and cancer by itself can have you know be more about you know having some aversion to change just think where the mind is set on what one is close to home at and then being in the house 
of us in the second house. It could be something that I valued. And also second house is the house associated with stubborn, obstinate Taurus. It's very unwavering. So you get uh, the idea. So you're gonna have, have, gonna have an opposition as far as that goes. So it might make it a little harder for me to start on something. If something were to begin, that could be a new, some kind of new, something that could be um, astrology uh, related at this time uh, that, that might that might be uh, something you know that might be astrologically uh, related that could be again a business or something more career related associated with that at this time could um, could oppose um, you know something that I'm going to be doing maybe consistently astrologically is going to make that opposition uh, to that mercury and cancer in the second house so it can make things a little bit more uh, difficult as far as the mindset in terms of actually embarking on that. So anyway, hold on a moment, people. Sorry about that. I'm back. But anyway, now a thing I wanted to talk about uh, too is I think what's interesting is that um well another example is if this falls I mean I want to go back to let's say this falls in the first or sixth house in one's chart this could be a new uh, Capricorn in some cases it, it could be some kind of I mean you're talking about Capricorn energy the solar eclipse and or and being in the first or second sixth house first house of course is the physical body sixth house is the health so in the physical body could be matters connected with one's health now this could be the start for a number of people in some regimented health related uh, program that requires a lot of discipline and consistency in the beginning period for many that could be about being more responsible to one's diet fitness and hygiene uh, at this time and I mean given I mean I want to also talk about the fact that okay looking at the electional aspects uh, this makes uh, at this time is significant as well as of course this could impact the delineation and interpretation now it's going to uh, make a conjunction to Jupiter at this time this new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn which of course could make it more auspicious and fortuitous and give more exuberance and enthusiasm to this energy and also more prosperity perhaps as well so this is a very good new moon solar eclipse I believe being in Capricorn now another thing uh, I wanted to get at is that I mean, looking at this as well, as far as Sabian symbols go, okay, this is going to be at four degrees Capricorn. So looking at, at this, this could be something where many may start something Capricorn related with more altruism and more and, and being uh, and more philanthropy. It could be very altruistic, philanthropic energy. It, for example, it could be the start for many if they're starting some kind of a business Capricorn related and might be the beginning for, for some people to start of like a low cost dental or accounting uh, program or even something with carpentry where, there were, where you're building things with wood for people for those that are less fortunate uh, than oneself such as the impoverished, the homeless, the oppressed and the hungry. Now another thing too is that when you're talking about some you know when, when you're talking about um even regular new moons in astrology and this is a solar eclipse and again that energy could be very more amplified intensified and pronounced other electional transits of course can be intensified and amplified given that they're occurring at this time of the new moon solar eclipse now the fact is you're going to have at this time the south node in capricorn uh conjunct jupiter at this time now it, given that you're going to have that energy though it's not though the south node may not it's not separating conjunction aspect from jupiter the fact it's conjunct it it could still show i believe that you about moving away energy and since you're, it's it's contacting jupiter and capricorn it could be moving away from a rather pessimistic or negative outlook or philosophy or it could be one where there was maybe one that was causing a lot of depression or despondency and making one feel rather melancholy 
It could be uh, moving away from some restriction or some limitation, excuse me, in connection with something with long distance uh, traveling, <coughs> excuse me, or maybe over conservative uh, publishing. So those are some ways that this could manifest and pan out uh, at this time. Now, another thing too, is when you're talking about new moon solar eclipses in astrology, transits to one's natal chart at this time, other transits to one's natal chart at this time, that's not associated with the solar eclipse, uh, may be amplified and intensified because they're occurring at the time of the new moon solar eclipse. Now at this time, I'm gonna have transit, for me, transit Mercury in Sagittarius, making an inconjunct aspect to my natal Taurus ascendant. So at this time, one way this may manifest and pan out, this could be about with Mercury in Sagittarius and the eighth house energy, really thinking about expanding one's horizons and thinking very you know, optimistically regarding something connected perhaps with astrology, the occult supernatural, that could, um, you know, as far and even just making a major change or transformation, it's going to make that in conjunct to my Taurus ascendant. So it could be a very powerful period of making some adjustment. And given you're talking about Taurus rising, of course, very outwardly, not wanting to really move that much, being very stagnant and sedentary. Even even the I mean the so the ascendant, of course, is the physical body. So it shows. I mean, Taurus rising can be somewhat immovable, can be very sedentary, very stagnant. And as far as the personality goes, of course, being having a very strong aversion uh, to ch change, given that I, I believe Taurus is the most fixed sign of the zodiac and having an um, overly too down to earth outlook on life, given that you're talking about Taurus and being the ascendant, of course, the outlook of life. So it's going to be a time where an adjustment may have to be made for me to really want to go outside the box and expand horizons and making that major change or transformation to be more. So the, the adjustment may be have to, having to be more flexible just in general at this time and being more willing to want to change outwardly, not so much as having that aversion to change, which of course could be connected with having a, a, a Taurus uh, ascendant. So anyway, uh, people, well, that'll, um, that'll conclude uh, this YouTube astrological segment for uh, my, um, my take on the uh, December to a December 26, 2019 new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn part one of two and stay tuned next time where I'll be talking about the uh, December uh, 26, uh, 2019 new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn part two of two. Until next time people, Edwin Learn saying stay well.